I found this contest from the old TIPPC notes, of course. And it's an interesting thing because they had solutions using zero three times, one, two, you can use all the numbers. And some of them are very easy, some of them require a lot of ingenuity to get to. So I want to show some possible approaches to it and where somebody actually used the approach that I'd already keyed in. I put their name or if you entered one, I've got yours in there too. So generating 24, here is a 17 byte solution counting two bytes for label A and three for the end. And this one is seven e to the x square root integer seven minus seven enter divided by enter plus minus end. See what I'm talking about with convoluted ideas, but you get to 24 with this. And so I always enjoyed looking at the, that's a good question, who thought of that? This is Chuck, wave your hand Chuck. He's the one whose mind works in this devious way. I'm kidding, kidding. But you know, you're looking at stuff using e to the x and square root just trying to get to 24. But that was a 17 byte solution. Here are some 16 byte solutions, seven, space, which is no, not really space, but enter, and they deleted the enter. It doesn't matter whether you delete it or not, it still takes the byte. So seven enter, seven enter, plus plus, natural log, last x plus, integer end, and that works. Okay, odd. Here's another one, going at it with the stat registers. Clear sum, sigma plus, sigma plus, sigma plus, enter, and then of course, seven plus, seven plus, seven plus. So as long as you get that three from doing sigma plus three times, Right? That will work. And then this last one, Juan, this was a great one because I would never have thought to use store y. 7 enter, 7 plus, 7 plus, store y, last x, divide plus, end generates 24. I'm hoping to post that, this to the forum, this PowerPoint, so we all can look at it. But that, I thought this was great. That was one of the best uh, uh, ideas I thought I saw on them. The first and the second. What's that? Who did the first and the second? Uh, TI people, <laughs> and they have no names. <laughs> All right, a couple more 15-byte solutions. Jim Wilds uh, entered this one, 7, enter, 7, enter, 7, pi, and pi is, I, I was technically going to disqualify anything with pi because that's like a digit, but it turned out not to matter. It turned out not to matter. You could have turned it in, but unless you had a 11-byte uh, solution, it was probably not going to work. Sorry about that, but yes. Uh, and we could call this the gym solution. Sorry, the gym solution. Or the third row solution. <laughs> well, he, you made the mistake of asking and he didn't. That's what it is. <laughs> Sorry, all right. Now, 14 byte solutions. We're getting closer now. Uh, label A, right, seven enter, seven divide, seven percent. Inverse tangent, integer factorial. One way to do this is you get to a four and you do factorial, right? That's a fairly common approach I've seen on these because that's a way to go from a four, which you might be able to generate to the 24, but 7% and inverse tangent. <laughs> Sorry, I just laugh at those things because that is so bizarre. Uh, who is end? No, that's, that's the end, of course. No, another TI guy, nameless TI guy. Uh, and some of these, I, was, I did a couple of them. My name's not on any of them I did. I just, we'll leave it that way. This is Craig's, 7 enter, 77, natural log, integer times, last x minus, and that generates 24. So great job with that. You remember the programming, uh, what kind of programmer are you things where you had to do a 1 or a 2 and without using comparisons? And some of them were 30 bytes long, really stuff. It showed really people's minds who either were interested in job security you know, or you know, no one will ever figure out how that thing works. All right, a couple of more 13 byte solutions. Getting closer here. 777 enter cosine percent integer factorial. So if you start with 24, you might can find ways of backing into what you need to do to get it, right? Uh, here's another one 7 enter 7 plus 7 divided by squared factorial. So that gets you to a, a 4 and then the factorial. And then this one, 77 enter 7 polar to rectangular, e to the x, integer factorial. All you got to do is get to that 4 if you want to use factorial, but I, I love some of these. I mean, who in the world, right? What, what in the world? What in the world? Weird stuff. So those were the 13s. A couple more 13s. These are ones that were entered. Jason Lee, good job here. 
cosine, now remember it's from a master clear, so it's going to have zero, and it's got to be in degree mode, right? So cosine a tangent 7 minus 7 minus 7 minus n. Try it. You get 24. Wild stuff. Uh, and this one is from Gunther, uh, using sigma plus again here, right? And this one points to you for this one. Because he does 7 sigma plus, 7 sigma plus, 7 sigma plus, recall 11. And because recall 11 has the stored x and y's in there, it's 24. <laughs> oh, boy. That is hilarious. Oh, we did the x times y. Yes, x times, x times the y, 1 and 2 and 3. What? Yeah, because they had 0, 7, and 7, 2, 2, 7. It, it worked. 3 and 21, right? So good job on that one. I, I thought about trying to find a way to make you win just for that because that showed a mastery of what the 41 was doing. That was great. 12 byte solutions, 777 log integer squared factorial, 77 tangent integer factorial, 7 just to use it, X and Y, right? You already had the 24 showing. You had to, had to use it somewhere. All right, now we're getting, I think this is a slide that has some of the 12 byte solutions from the group. Joey did this one. 777 log log, a tangent integer end. That generated 24. Good job, Joey. Um, and Roger Hill, 777 square root pi minus integer end. That's 12, but it turns out Roger does not win this one. I know that's a shock to us all. If Roger enters something, most people just turn away from the contest because that's the way it ought to be. Roger is incredible. But that one does give 24 as well. And then for the RPN basic contest, the winner is David Hayden. 77.7 tangent integer factorial end gives you 24. Congratulations, David. David can pick from the designated area of door prizes back there. And we have a uh, certificate for the RPN basic contest. This one, by the way, that David did was one that the TI people also had found. So what did you pick, David? Huh? What did you pick? Yeah. Oh, what did I pick? I picked the... The Bluetooth speaker. I picked the Bluetooth speaker. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> it, it works great at the beach. That's what I use it for. You don't have to keep track of all of them, Bob. Just the premium ones. Okay. I put that in the record. All right. Um, we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming contest winner announcements for a bulletin from Richard. You don't need the clicker. No, I don't. All right, we've tallied the, uh, um, the best speaker votes. And every year we do this, and every year I never guess the winner. <laughs> I've never been successful at best the winner yet. But we had a little bit of a problem this year because we had a tie. And the tie was between Cuba and the Polish guy. <laughs> And you pick any, any prize on that table back there. That is not even a joke. That is really true. There's no longer a dividing line between stuff on one side and the other. <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me how certain things happen during this conference that when you think about it, God must be watching over everybody, you know, because he's really doing his job. <laughs> Okay. Oh, all right. Yes, and back to our most popular part of the program. So I meant to say I really appreciated everybody who participated in the uh, Generate 24 contest. Uh, I wanted to have something that did not seem so complex that only two or three people out of 40 or whatever would do. So I may try this again, just something that 
anybody with a piece of paper can think, how do I get 24 or something showing in the display? So we had a good number of entries for that. Um, I want to move to the, um, let me look real quick. Yes, I want to look to the RPL contest next. There were five entries from it uh, for, into the contest. Roger Hill had an entry that they all worked, by the way, uh, with 91 bytes. Thank you, Roger, for entering the contest. <laughs> right? The, that was fifth place. Fourth place was Bill Butler, who had an entry with 85 and a half bytes. Eighty, 85 and a half. Uh, third place was Joey Shepard, just got beaten out at 77 bytes. And there was a tie for first. Same number of bytes. 73 and a half was the number of bytes that won. And the tiebreaker in this case turned out not to be the number, but the fact that David Hayden won the RPN. And so the winner of the RPL is Jason Lee. Congratulations. <laughs> Yes. Now, no, one, one second. Uh, the um, amicable numbers, agreeable numbers, friendly numbers, Google it now. There's a wiki page for it, which actually takes you to that, what is it, the warehouse of sequences? I don't know what you call that. The, yes. And it's got tons of those to test. So uh, thank you all for not going to the wiki page. Uh, it was, a, you know, blackout when we're doing the contests. But uh, the... Forum results are going to be announced after 6 a.m. Central tomorrow. So far, everybody over there has behaved. Now, the one I really did not think anybody would do. I'm sorry, I shouldn't doubt any of you. But I just didn't think it would happen. There were three entries for the float routine. Three entries. Uh, third place, uh, first one I think done was Craig Blado. 89 bytes. Uh, congratulations, Craig. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Check to see that the clip is still on there. It's still on there. All right. Uh, 89. Uh, his routine did save X and Y, so it had a couple of penalties. Remember, the goal on this was to try to use it in the as, as, in normal calculations, right? To attach it after a, a label that had plus and all that kind of thing. Wanted to mimic the TI way of doing it, uh, and it did with X and Y saved. Um, second place only by a hair was Juan. You were two bytes longer than the shortest solution. He had 57 bytes and he saved X and Y. Congratulations. And, and Z. And Z. <laughs> Can you tell a few jokes, Richard? <laughs> I can ask a few questions. I, was, I thought I keyed that thing in and it only looked like it saved X and Y the way the others did. What I did to test it, I, I stored alpha, X, Y, Z, Z, and, and I ran it on As Craig will tell you, I'm very sensitive about making sure I make the right call as an umpire. So hold on, let's put some Jeopardy music on. Can somebody do that one? <laughs> Okay. Remember, please remember, the decision of the judge is final, final, unappealable, written in tablets of stone, thrown at the people at the face of the mountain. Ooh. Wait a minute. Would you reconsider? <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is on the float, we are going to have two winners, Roger Hill and Juan. Roger and Juan get to pick any prize they want off of the back table. 